Welcome everybody, day one of Bible in one year for Church of the Front Range. We are in the first couple of chapters of Acts. The Holy Spirit is given, poured out on the people gathered together in Jesus' name. The inauguration of the church age takes place. There's so much to say about this passage, but without a doubt, one of the really interesting things taking place is when the Spirit is poured out, people began to speak in other languages. Usually it says tongues. It's the same word for languages. And throughout the book of Acts, we will see that when the Spirit is received, this is one of the really common manifestations all through the book of Acts, that people just start to speak out in other languages. And so let's just talk briefly, like, what is this about? What's going on? Why other languages? For a little context, you have to remember that God's promises were bound up in the people of Israel, okay? And so this nation, this place, this land, and yet Jesus had told the disciples in Acts 1-8, which we just read, that when the Spirit was given, they would receive power to be witnesses in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the remotest parts of the earth. Clearly, the promises bound up in Israel Jesus was the true Israelite. They have been fulfilled, and God will be a light to the Gentiles as well, meaning all of the non-Jews. And so whenever the Spirit's poured out, they started speaking in all these other languages. And you have to remember, the Jews that lived all throughout this region and all these various nations, they spoke native tongues. They're called the diaspora because they were dispersed. Uh, and they were in town for Pentecost. Pentecost comes 50 days after Passover. It was a feast where they would come and they would celebrate the wheat harvest. And so they're all in town. They speak other languages. And right there at the beginning, God is showing as the Spirit just caused them to speak these other languages, that his good news, yes, it's coming to Jews. It's coming to Jews gathered in Jerusalem and the gospel's for them. And then it's also for the Gentiles. He is showing that his heart is to bring the good news to all nations, all tribes, all tongues. Don't forget the Great Commission is that they're to make disciples, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey over all of the earth, all of the earth. And so we are seeing in this manifestation of the Spirit that there's this impetus for the gospel, the good news, to get out to all peoples. That is part of the sign and the wonder of the speaking in other languages is God wants every tribe and he wants every tongue to be a part of his heavenly family. And that is part of what he is doing in the church age. We know that this church age will not end until every tribe and every tongue has heard. And that's why there's such a strong motivation in Christians to bring the gospel to all of the nations that God would receive worship and people from every place and from every language. And so we see all these different languages as part of the sign. And so I think that that might help to understand why it's so significant. Uh, you have to kind of put yourself back in time to understand that the promises were bound up in the people of Israel and now it's being released to all the peoples, all the tribes, all of the tongues, you know, all of the languages. But there is another component of the spiritual gift of tongues. And so, yes, we see in Acts that there's people speaking in other languages and people are hearing them. Uh, but Paul, the Apostle Paul, or God through the Apostle Paul, writes about the spiritual grace of tongues as a prayer language as well. And there is certainly a spiritual gift that can be received where one can pray in a language that they themselves do not understand, but it's the Spirit praying through them. And so just talking about this briefly, I can tell you from my own experience that I, uh, you know, I grew up in a church and I heard that these things don't exist anymore and that they had ceased. And I read, read the Bible for myself as a teenager and I had a hard time kind of reconciling what I was reading with what I was hearing. And I started praying uh, that God would give me the, the, this gift of, of tongues, of a prayer language. And one day while I was praying, the Holy Spirit came on me very strongly, so strongly that I thought I was going to just start speaking um, in some other language. And it didn't happen, but the way I interpreted that as ex experience was like God was saying, yes, like this is real. 
you know, and it kind of settled it in my spirit. Like, you know, he does this. I may not have seen it. I may not have experienced it, but he's still doing this today, even if it's not a part of my own experience. And then years later, I was praying with two other guys, uh, just a prayer gathering. And I don't even know how to explain it. It was like it started in my stomach and it came all the way up. And if I didn't open my mouth freely to allow whatever was in there to come out, uh, it was like I was going to explode. And so I finally just did like I had to, to obey. And this other language started coming out. And I'm not going to lie, it felt uncomfortable doing it. It felt uncomfortable doing it in front of, you know, my two buddies. Um, and yet there was without a doubt an experience from that day forward. Um, I have been able to pray in this prayer language that God gave me. And I certainly do not know uh, what it means when I pray uh, in that way. But I just want to testify. It is one thing that the Spirit does. And I don't hear a lot of examples of people, um, you know, speaking in a language and other people hearing it in their own language. I have, I have heard of some of that. I've read about some of that. Um, but certainly the spiritual gift of a prayer language, um, you know, I, my own belief about it is that for an intercessor, um, you know, we, we get tired praying with our minds, but we can actually pray more and we can pray longer and we can be a part of uh, the work of intercession in an increased way um, by, you know, receiving this, this prayer language. And so, listen, if I were you, I would, uh, first of all, if God says it and it's in the Bible, I would believe it. Um, you certainly can pray uh, to receive that. Um, and whether God gives you that spiritual grace flowing through your life or some other um, certainly celebrate the full scope of all the things that God does and think it's a beautiful thing. There is a third way in which we see the spiritual grace of tongues flowing through. Uh, Paul writes also about this, that people shouldn't be speaking in tongues whenever there are uh, people present that could be unbelievers. Um, and, uh, you know, you can probably get that in the natural uh, however, if the spiritual gift of interpretation is there to um, be able to share, uh, you know, the interpretation of the language, then that is something that becomes intelligible and it's something that people can hear and receive. And uh, I have never experienced that, but I have heard of uh, God doing that before and it's an awesome thing as well. And so it's hard to get in the first couple chapters of Acts and not talk about this whole languages thing. I hope that that shines some light. I know this was a longer video already and so I should stop now. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, pray that God does a good thing. And you know, I certainly pray and ask that God would give more of you the uh, spiritual grace of tongues and that you could bring that to him in the place of prayer and be used in that way. It's an awesome thing. Praise the Lord, and we do pray that your the, the testimony of all that you've done, God, would be brought to every tribe and every tongue. Amen.